What is the best motor? Possibly the most frequently asked question in the e-bike world. Does it simply come down to performance and reliability? We're joined by Pete Collard from the e-bike motor center in the south of England, although they do have partners worldwide. Now, the e-bike motor center repairs and upgrades e-mounted bike motors. We've done a separate video which actually looks at the cost of repairing a motor when it's out of warranty. And it's actually surprisingly low cost, which is actually uh, quite reassuring. But Pete, you must get asked the question, what's the best e-bike motor? A million times. Yeah. It, what is it? It is, the, it is the most popular question we ever get asked. Um, but yeah, we, we, there's kind of a stock answer. I'm a motorcyclist and I, and I, I think you should buy it from your heart, not oh. your head. <laughs> Where's that going to get yeah. to you? Yeah. I mean, I ride Honda. <laughs> Pretty reliable, so, right? Yeah, I mean, and no, nobody's going to stand for that answer, are they? Let's change it up then. What do you think is the best e-bike, e-mountain bike motor ever made? How about that one? Oh, <laughs> I didn't think you'd fix that one. <laughs> yeah. That Surely old... that's the motor that's been fixed the most times. Yeah, that, that old jalopy there. So this um, is the Bosch uh, Performance Line CX Gen 2, right? Yeah. This is the one that came with a little uh, little, um, uh, cassette, little cog in the front there. Yeah, a little spindle. Sprocket. Um, yeah, so if you can keep the water out of this, it will just run and run and run. It's, it's almost indestructible. It's because, like because, because why? It's like a tractor gearbox in there, big clunky gears, great big bearings. Um, it is virtually indestructible, but you gotta keep the water out. We did that, we, we um, invented a seal for it and a cover and a, and a shield on the other side. Once that was done, if we repaired one, we never saw it again. Really? Yeah. So, like, what kind of what kind of mileage would you be expecting from something like once it's been upgraded by yourselves? Um, it technically should be the same as the ones we used to get from abroad before yeah. Brexit, yeah. Um, and they were typically um, fifty, sixty thousand miles up. Fifty thousand miles. Yeah, nothing from wrong with them. From that little unit. Yeah, not worn out. Just, just, just we'd we'd open them up, regrease them. Can I, put can them I just have a look again. at that? And I guess the weight of that. I mean, it's probably a little bit over three kilos. There, there's a problem, isn't it? Uh, I mean, we've got a. Uh, let me just go and get a Gen Four to here for a minute. I mean, we compare the size of these, so obviously yes, there's the size is a feature of, of the modern day e mountain bike. But I'm really interested. You said that, Pete. Um, so. I guess, I'm guessing from a company like yourselves, reliability is quite key, right? Yeah, and uh, unfortunately, when they, as they're getting smaller and smaller, obviously everything's getting smaller inside. So the gears are getting smaller, the, the bearings are getting smaller. So they tend to put up with less, um, less abuse. I think that's fine in a road bike, but uh, an EMTB gets abused. It doesn't matter what you do with it, you're going to have a pedal strike, you're going to have an off. Um, and that really puts some stress through the motor. I'm guessing, you know, for some people watching this video, they might think that, you know, power and torque is everything, especially if you're a heavier rider. Yeah. I mean, you know, we're looking at, you know, the likes of um, the Rocky Mountain, 108 newton meters. You've got the Bosch CX Race Limited Edition motor, which gives you all the power in one go. You've got the Polinis, you got the, the Bafangs. Is, isn't power and torque, what makes a great motor, or a, you know, the best motor? Um, yeah, I mean, it, normally if, if you're a big lad, then you, you've got your big legs, and, and that, that carries you just as far and fast as, as the little lad, but um, I think with the, with the power side of it, it's, uh, it, it, power is great if you're on a straight line, um, you know, you're nothing technical, no problem at all. If you've got too much power and you're trying to get up a, a technical, as you know yourself, trying to get up a technical climb. I, I think, I, and I genuinely believe this, is that a lot of people don't actually know the relationship between, um, between cadence uh, and power. So I think in that respect, motors such as you know, the Shimano EP801 with the auto shift technology, it actually puts the bike in the right gear for you. So I think, I think what makes a great mode in that respect, I think I would put that in that category. So what's it, what's your thoughts on the whole, I mean, I get shot, I got shot down frequently, the fact that I don't talk about the, you know, the, the, the motor gearbox units. Mm -hmm. And the reason I don't is simply the fact that I've not actually, put one of those units into dirty Welsh bogs or Scottish bogs and see how they operate in those scenarios. But what's your thoughts thinking on them? Um, I think if they're designing them, uh, and again, unfortunately, we 
We haven't seen any either, other, other than in a box of bits in, in, <laughs> in a box. Um, but we haven't had um, field experience. But if they're going to build them the same as they are building these ones, they're, they're, they're going to have trouble. So Interesting. Yeah, they do. So maybe maybe don't rush into buying them for a, for a couple of years yet then. <laughs> so I don't like Pete, TV. Does, Pete doesn't want to answer that <laughs> question. Well, let's talk about features then. Um, a lot of people might think that, you know, adjustability makes a great motor. Yeah, and you've, you've got your apps and your, your adjustable motors and your, your power settings and controls, but, um, and, that, and that seems to be played with to death when you first get it. <laughs> We're all the same. It's like, yeah, I can, I can change this, I can change that. Um, but what we find with most people that after that initial excitement's gone, then they just set it in the one power setting that they're happy with, and, and that's where it kind of stays. Yeah, I gotta be honest. I do, you know, I, I know, you know, I use the modes. I use, you know, Eco Tour, Tour Plus Booster, whatever it's called. I, I rarely, I rarely fiddle with presets or. No, I think or, I think you're right. The the Eco Boost and Tour and all that is is critically important because obviously. As I said, t technical climbs, you might want to come down or go up and power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it, so that, that's brilliant. But yeah. actually altering what power each level gives you and everything, I don't, I don't think it's so important. Yeah, it's, it's a bit, a little bit like, like, little bit like suspension. You know, you, you, kind of, you can never get the best suspension setup. It's always a compromise. And I think it's the same with motors because if you, especially if you, if you ride proper mountain terrain, then things are always changing anyway. So mm. I, think, I think what you've already got is enough. Having said that, Pete, I think that, you know, many, uh, many brands have got navigation, which I think is a very cool feature. Uh, route planning is is it, they're great features to have uh, on a motor, right? Yeah, uh, I would agree with that. Um, navigation is is yeah getting very very good now. So because I think you know lots of people who are maybe new to e mountain biking, they will be going into environments which you know they might not have been into before, and so you know getting out to them might. I mean, I've been in the situation myself, you know, trying to find the the easiest way out with the with the least amount of climbing. So yeah. I think in that respect <laughs> is pretty cool. What about the behavior of the motors, um, especially such things as overrun. Um, I think it's undervalued by some people. It's also something that a lot of people don't understand how to get, get the most out of because they overrun. If you've got a super technical climb, if you've got, I can't remember what it currently is, is, is it two meters of overrun is allowed by, by EU laws or something like that? But it enables you to conquer these climbs. It enables you to keep the flow up, up a trail. So. For me, I, I would definitely say I'd consider Overrun as, as part of a really good motor and one that I choose. I must admit, I, I would agree with you. I do like a little bit of Overrun, mm -hmm. um, but there's always that time when it catches you out and you, 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 <laughs> you just see the tree root at the last minute and you, 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 yeah. you, you take off the pedals, and, and, but you're still going. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, I think it's more good than, than bad. Yeah, um, but at the same time, I think you know motors. Like uh, we both come from motorcycle backgrounds. I like I like riding one two fives, two fifties, five hundreds. I think you simp they're just different motors, and you learn how to get the the best out of them, don't yeah. you? You don't like a, you don't ride a one two five like you'd ride a five hundred. So yeah. I think you know people ask me, and I, I genuinely say I enjoy riding all motors, and because I simply like to tune into their to their personalities, you know, their characteristics. So, I, I'll be honest with you, I, that is one thing that uh, I find very strange. We get a lot of customers, um, obviously they love the bros because it's, it's quiet. And if there is any noise that comes from it, they, they get quite annoyed about it. They do, don't they? Yeah, but I actually like the noise of a, of a, <laughs> a, a, a whine out of some of the other geared, geared motors. And, and I think it's kind of, it, it tells me that something's going on. It tells me that I am on an assisted bike. I, I, know, I bought an assisted bike, so why should I not know I'm in it? Yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, it's maybe no, it's funny me. you're not the first one to say that. I, I, think, I think there's a reassuring metallic whir to some drives, you know, like, like the Bosch, for example. Yeah. It's, got, it's got really sort of, how would you describe this? Well, metallic, metallic whir, I guess, isn't it? You know, it's doing something for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so at the same time, like a lot of people, there's been lots of comments across sites worldwide. Oh, you know, the kind of the Bosch and the Shimano, the, the, there's a bit of rattle in them. Yeah. Um, which there is, we're not disputing that, but 
is that for me when I'm in a a horrible rock garden in I don't know Scotland or Wales. I can't hear any rattling, Moses. All I can hear is my teeth rattling. <laughs> yeah. I, I suppose I kind of get it. If you were going down a French mountain for half an hour, you might, by the time you're halfway down, get a bit fed up with it. Um, but no, I mean, it has to be a, a very, as you know yourself, it has to be a very certain set of circumstances to get that rattle. Mm -hmm. um, and then it doesn't normally yeah. last what, very long when you're... And when the motor is driving, it's not rattling anyway. No. I feel I feel we've not discussed reliability enough in this in this chat. Yeah. Can can we go into that a bit more? Go because ahead. I think that I think the big steps in in e bike motors have already been taken. The, the big steps in e bike systems have been taken. For example, you could argue that the Levo is the bike that set the standard for how most modern day mm. e mountain bikes are. Maybe you guys might disagree. Maybe you don't disagree. Let us know in the comments down below on that. But reliability will surely be the next big thing, will it not? I think it has to be. Uh, I think so many people now are so um, worried that when their warranty runs out, they're in for a massive bill. Um, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be like that. But they're, they're, they're shying away from e-bikes because of it. And I think, uh, you know, the, the, if, if the manufacturers start to listen to people like ourselves that, that I don't say we know better, but we know more. We, we, you know, we see every motor from every bike in, uh, from all around the world in all different conditions, hot climates, cold climates, um, wet, dry, uh, you know, everything. Um, so we get a massive picture of, of what causes the issues and, and how to stop them as well. We, we spend uh, so much time um, you know, working on ways of fixing the issues that these motors have. So, um, yeah, it's... Um... I think, I think a reliability is, is, is one thing. The cost of repairing a motor is actually surprisingly inexpensive. You know, it's like £250 to overhaul uh, your motor at e-bike motor centre. And if you put that in perspective, you know, like servicing a fork or a shock is going to be probably £180 a time. And I think it's after 30 hours use. So um, I think... You know, the fact you can repair them is a great thing. The other thing I want to touch upon is um, people fear about backwards compatibility. But at the same time, that kind of tends to imply that the old things are, are sort of no longer needed and they're so far behind the new things. But that's not actually the case, is it? Things, motors are now improving very on a very small level, they're not like there's no major changes taking place. I don't think, at least. But it's that whole mindset, or you could have the latest and the greatest, when it's actually not that case, is it? No, and, and smaller and lighter is is great to a certain extent, but then it gets to the point where it's it's small enough, but it's so light that it's not strong enough. Um, so there, there's there's limits. There's, yeah. So do you think the e-bike do you think the e-bike uh, industry is going down the wrong road, and do you think they're trying to trying to go down the lightweight route when actually the difference between a 20 and 25 kilo bike isn't that, that much out on the trail and rider weights vary anyway. And, and like into, when it comes to performance, there's, there's an assumption that lighter is better. And I've, I've seen for myself, I can ride down a ridiculously hard trail faster on a 25 kilo bike than I can on an 18 kilo bike. So this whole business of making smaller, lighter might not necessarily be true. Then you get to the fence at the bottom. <laughs> um, well, yeah, you, you're right. It, 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 it's not. It, it's an assisted bike at the end of the day. You got you got a bloody great battery in there that weighs a ton. Um, what you the few ounces you're shaving off the motor, it's not really making much difference to you. That you could leave your shoelaces out and, and save mm -hmm. the same amount of weight. Yeah, the big problems we see is, is like I say, as, as they are getting smaller and lighter, they, they are getting more flimsy. I mean, that. So this is an example um, of two bearings from the same motor. Yeah. This is one from a few years ago. SKF? No. <laughs> Koyo, actually. Right. G German. Yeah. Um, and this is the bearing from the same motor today. Right. The common sense would say that the bigger bearing is going to be more durable, right? Yeah. So if you get water or, or grit or you know dust and muck in, in that big bearing, it takes a long time to wear the the big balls away. Yeah. If you like. Um, 
the little bearings got tiny little balls so the minute something gets in there it's, yeah. it's gone yeah do you think i mean I, I was actually quite surprised when we come down to see pete is that that a lot of these e-bike motors in the past sort of 10 years the water ingress is mind-blowing there's nothing to prevent water and moisture getting in there no, but so so is that the the, the new challenge? And is to get seals. I mean, you did you did show me uh, well. We got the there's new seals on this new Brose motor, so that's 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 a step in the right direction, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, most I think we we kind of missed the point right from the beginning that the e-bike motor market is generally for road bikes. Um, so Europe is is ninety percent road bikes. Um, so the ten percent of off-road bikes, they're they're the ones that are putting them through the puddles and the floods and everything else. Um, the road bikes don't get that sort of abuse, shall we say? But they're still subjected to a lot a lot of rain and things like that, and rain and puddles on the road. Sh sh is it really that different? Um, yeah. The, so on the on, on a road bike, when you've got a bearing, it has a a splash-proof cover. Right, and, that, and that's it. And that's all that's stopping the water going into the bearing. If that water goes in under pressure, so if you go underwater with your motor, if you um, pressure wash it, hose it, put your bike on the back of a, of a car, mm -hmm. uh, on a car rack. Um, what happens when you put the bike on the back of a car rack? So obviously if, it, if the road's wet, you'll get in spray, but it's not always the spray that causes the problem. It's more the air pressure that's around the back of the car and it's pushing that spray in from every direction as well. Um, you, you will always find somebody that's like, I've never, I've never cleaned my bike. Yeah. Um, I've not got a car rack either. <laughs> yeah. And you say, how do you get, do you, do you transport your car, uh, your bike? Yeah. So I'll put it on the car rack. Right. Interesting. So yeah, cover, cover your motor guys. Just, just a plastic bag, a bin liner, anything. Just, just keep the, the air out of it. So Pete, uh, we've talked about lots of things. We've talked about cadence, we've talked about power talk, we've talked about uh, reliability. Uh, features, you name it, apps. The bottom line is, what is the best e-mountain bike motor, in your eyes at least? So there isn't an unreliable motor, full stop. So what's unreliable in this country with our weather might not be uh, unreliable in a, in a dry country, for example, or a dusty country, or a hot country, or a cold country. Um, so it, it's not really... Um, which is the best motor, it probably comes down to the fact that what you see on the forums is not, is not what we see. So if you see on the forums that everybody's motor is failing, they're not. If, if they were, we'd, we'd be a lot bigger than we are and I'd be a lot richer. <laughs> um, so don't worry so much about the motors, they are all reliable. The, the, for every person you see that's, that's um, had four or five motors fail within his warranty, there's another 10 people that have never had a motor fail within their warranty. Um, so it's, it's more a case of if, you, if you're looking to keep your bike for a long time, buy a motor that's, that's repairable. Buy a motor that's been, that can be looked after once you're out, outside of warranty. Otherwise, it's going to be very expensive for you. And that's not, much, that's not too much to ask, really, is it? I mean, we're just talking about a little part of the bike. It's the same as a cassette or a fork or all those other parts of it. So um, It shouldn't be. Things should be repairable. Yeah. So there you go, folks. Uh, Pete Collard, e-bike motor centre. Um, really interesting. Uh, and I think it's a mindset. You know, all those little bits about, you know, behaviour and adjustability and, and all these things. They are important. They all have their different personalities. But yeah, I think I think you're right. I think that the whole business repairability is super important. Pete, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for inviting us down here to um, south of England. Uh, I'm sure there are a lot of questions. I'm sure there's a lot of answers which many we, many of you might have. So let's get involved in the discussion of what is the best e mountain bike motor. What's that you got there then? Possibly the most repairable motor on the market. But the bros, eh? <laughs> it, 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 honestly, it's, it's a very, very odd thing that may be one of the, the motors that has a few issues. It's had, it's had a lot of history. I'm sure you guys have, will be able to inform us in the comments. There's been a lot of issues with that yeah. motor. 
it but it is now the most upgradable and repairable motor that we do. We, there's nothing on this motor we can't fix. Food for thought. Here you go.